Hey everybody, welcome back to another processing video. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use color masks inside of Photoshop. This will allow you to get much more color separation and detail out of your Nebula photos. Before we go any further though, I need to explain how I captured this data. This image here was captured with my new ZWO ASI 533 monochrome camera and an H alpha filter and then an oxygen filter. So a dual band basically. And what that means is that my H alpha data is mapped to the right color channel, and my oxygen data is mapped to both the green and the blue color channels. So I really only have two wavelengths to work with in this video. And one of the problems I've been having over the last year or so is that's all I've been doing, is H alpha and oxygen. Because now that I'm in a more light polluted area, that's the way I prefer to do things. So the problem was, all my photos just kinda look like this. They had the nice H alpha, but there's really no blues to talk about. The nebula itself which is kinda white, pink or red. But using the technique I'm going to show you today, I was really able to separate those colors and get more of that nice blue color back into the image. And thankfully this workflow will only take you about a few minutes, provided you have Raya Pro. Raya Pro is a plugin for Photoshop created by Jimmy McIntyre. Jimmy is also one of the best instructors out there for Photoshop, so I'd recommend you check him out here on YouTube. And also, again, check out his Raya Pro software on his website. We are going to be using the Instamask panel which is part of Raya Pro. However, if you don't have Raya Pro yet or you can't afford it, I understand. So I'm also gonna show you how to do this workflow for free just using the built-in tools inside of Photoshop. But first, I wanna show you how easy it is with Raya Pro and Instamask. To start off with, let's make sure you understand first the concepts that we're gonna be talking about today. So when I say a color mask, we're basically taking the red color channel and using this as our mask. And remember, a layer mask is just a little white or black box which is added to a levels or curves or anything else. And if I make some adjustments here on any adjustment layer I want, because this box is pure white, it's affecting the entire image. But if I take a black paintbrush and I paint on my white layer mask, I'm effectively turning off where I don't want it to apply. That's what we're using layer masks for inside of Photoshop. And you can see now that our changes are only affecting the area outside the North American Nebula because that area is white and I've painted out the area I don't want to be affected with black. I just wanted to make sure we threw in a quick refresher on layer mask to start off with. Now this is where it gets kind of confusing because when we look at our color channels, if I delete this real quick, we don't necessarily have pure white and pure black. We have a lot of shades of gray. But the brighter something is, the more it will be targeted by the layer mask. The darker, the less targeted. And because my H alpha is mapped to the red color channel, we're actually looking at the H alpha data right here. Then we have the oxygen data, which is mapped to the green and the blue color channels. And because the green color channel is a bit darker than the blue, that means that our final photo here has subdued greens compared to the original, where the green and the blue are more or less the same brightness. So I hope that all makes sense. If not, you might want to check out my Deep Space course over on HowTube, which goes into all this in a lot more detail. Or you can even check out my Patreon, which is only 10 bucks a month, and we get into a lot more of this over on there. Anyway, if you want to follow along with me today, I recommend you find one of your own Nebula photos, where it's pretty large and filling up the frame. That'll make this a lot easier to practice with. Then, assuming you've got Raya Pro, we'll click on the Instamask button right here. And in the newer versions, you have four buttons here in the middle. There's kind of like a luminosity button here, which affects all the colors. Then you've got one for just red, green, and blue. Very simply, all you need to do is click on the red button right here, and then click on B1 for brights 1. And what this has done is basically grab the red color channel and turn it into a layer mask. Then we'll click on Select. That'll bring up the dotted lines. And now we can go to our adjustments tab up top here and then choose any adjustment we want for the rest of our workflow. I prefer using a levels, but you can use whatever makes sense to you. Once I click on the levels, it will automatically use the red color channel now as our layer mask. We could see that right here. And if I hold down the alt or option key and click on it, again, there's pretty much the H alpha data. It's been converted into a layer mask. This is where it gets really powerful. So with my new levels layer created, I'll rename it to red levels. That might make sense. 
then we'll go up to the top here and change it from RGB to just red because that is our target. Next, I can use these points here to modify the red colors in the photo. And I'd recommend you just move them left and right and see what looks good to you. So if I move the midpoint to the right, that will subdue the reds in the photo. And now I'm getting more of that blue in the nebula. Then I can bring the white point slider to the left to make the red stand out better towards the more bright areas here. Finally, I can move the black point slider to the right to make the image more blue if that's something I want to do. And just with this one adjustment, we can radically alter the color balance of the image very easily. Although I'd recommend we probably don't go that far. I want to do something a little bit more subtle. So here's now our before and after. We just turn down the red a little bit to give us more color separation. You could also go to RGB and continue to adjust your points, but just be careful because you can mess with the image if you're not careful. The main thing though is changing it to red and then affecting the reds. Once you've got your red color channel looking pretty good, we can go back to Instamask. We'll click on the blue button this time, and with the blue button selected, we'll click on Brights 1 again. Now we've grabbed the blue color channel and made it a layer mask. Remember though, you have to click on Select here in Instamask to get the dotted lines. Then you go back to your Adjustments tab and add another Levels Adjustment layer. And if you did all that right, you'll now have your blue color channel as a layer mask for your new levels. And again, what I would do is name this blue levels to stay organized. With my blue levels created, I'll change from RGB to blue, and I'll do the same thing. I'll move my sliders around until I like the color balance of the photo. And in this way, we have precise control over our color balance in the image. Don't forget, we can always go to RGB, mess around with that if we want to, and you could even go in and also adjust the red and the green color channels if you want to. It's not a bad idea, but it's also kind of hard to wrap your mind around it. So that's why I normally just pick one color, in this case blue, and then I go from there. Let's do a before and after and see how far we've taken the image with just these two levels adjustments. Here's the original. It was overly red and kind of white. Now though, we have much more color separation and we're starting to get some nice blues out of the nebula, which weren't really visible before. And that's how you're gonna use Raya Pro to make your life a lot easier when it comes to this workflow. Again, you choose your color channel that you wanna affect, click on Brights 1. After you've chosen, let's say, Green Brights 1, make sure you click on Select, and then choose whatever adjustment you want. You don't have to use Levels either. You can maybe use Curves instead. Then I would call this new layer Green Curves. With my new Green Curves layer, Kind of the same deal here. I'll change it to green. And I'll just move my point up and down to affect the colors in the photo. I can even add multiple points to have even more control. And you can see now we're starting to add some purple into the photo. It looks pretty nice. There's our before and after. For those that don't have Raya Pro, I'm gonna show you how to do this for free using the built-in interface here in Adobe Photoshop. So let's go right back to our default image. The way this is gonna work is you're gonna to go to your channels tab, making sure you are in a new layer, in this case called layer one. If you've got a curve or something else, that's gonna get in the way, so just delete all that. And then again, make sure you are just on a new layer. Then we'll go to the channels tab, and we've got red, green, and blue. Pick whatever color you wanna start with. I'll go with red today. Then with my red color channel selected, I'll hit control or command A, control or command C, to copy the data. Then we'll turn on the eyeball for RGB. Go back to the layers. Click on the add new layer button in the lower right. Looks like a plus sign. That'll add a blank new layer. And we can rename this to red. Finally, we'll paste in the data with controller command V. And there we go. Next, we'll go back to our adjustments tab and choose whatever we want to use, whether that's a levels, a curves, whatever it might be. I'll do levels though. The next challenge is how do we get this data to become a layer mask for our levels? And it's actually pretty simple. With the levels layer mask selected, we'll go up to image, apply image. When you click on image, apply image, just hit okay. Everything should already be set up properly. 
and there we go. You should now see, if you look closely, that the red color data has been pasted in to our layer mask for the levels adjustment layer. Now to proceed with the workflow, we need to either delete or turn off the eyeball for the red because it's going to override the color image. I'm just going to delete it though, that way it's out of the way. Okay, so there we go. Now, with our new levels one targeting just the reds, we should rename it so we don't get confused. I'm going to do the same thing as we did before. We'll change from RGB to red. We'll move our sliders around however we want to. And if that looks good, we've done the first part of our workflow. Now to keep organized, we're going to turn off the eyeball for the red levels. Basically, just make it invisible for right now. Make sure you click back on layer one so it's selected. Then go to the channels tab and we'll grab the blue data next with controller command A controller command C. Then we go back to the layers, create a new layer, and paste in the data with controller command V. And we'll rename it to blue. And honestly, probably the easiest way to do this is all at the same time. So we'll turn off the blue eyeball, click on layer one again to be safe, go back to channels, click on green, controller command A, controller command C, add a new layer, hit controller command V to paste in the data, and call this green. And if I hadn't already gone through and deleted red, I would have red, green, and blue as separate layers right here. So for example, if I want to make a green color channel selection next, I'll turn off all my eyeballs except for the green, then I'll add either a curves or a levels, I'll go with curves again, provided my curves is above the green and that's the only thing visible right now, I go up to image, apply image, and then just hit okay. And that basically copies the data to the layer mask. Then I turn off the eyeball for the green. And now with this new curves, I'll rename it so I don't get confused. This is our green curves. And I can go through on the green color channel and make my adjustments to either enhance or subdue the greens in the photos. I'll drag this to the top and also turn on our other eyeball so we can stay organized here. You're starting to see though how the free method is a little bit convoluted and that's why I recommend using Raya Pro and the Instamask feature to make your life easier because you literally click two buttons and it's done. You don't have to keep screwing around with all this other stuff. But at the end of the day it's still the same workflow. We're taking our different color channels here and turning them into layer masks. Then we're adjusting the individual color channels for those layer masks. And because we've got everything set up properly, these are targeting our colors in the photo. And we have complete control over the color balance now very easily. And once you've got a pretty nice color balance, don't forget about your selective color adjustments, which are always available inside of Photoshop. With a new selective color layer, I can further tweak the colors in my image. And this is one of my preferred ways to do things because now you have even more control over the color balance of your photo. And that's about all I've got for you in today's video. I wanted to show you how to use your color masks here to take your images to the next level. And I showed you two different workflows for that using Raya Pro's Instamask, which is very easy, and also how to do it manually just by grabbing your individual color channels here, creating new layers with them, and then copying that data to the layer mask. That's basically all we did. So I hope you got something out of today's video and you can start applying this to your own images and that'll allow you to get better photos, especially if you're using the same workflow as I am, where you're just taking H alpha data and then oxygen data. Now you can get much more color response out of the oxygen than you might have been able to before. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed the tutorial, don't forget to check out my deep space course over on how to. It currently has over 100 videos, which will take you through the planning, the setup, the processing, and more.